Hey everybody, it's Brian from Phone Arena here, and today we are taking a look at the ZTE Vital. Now the ZTE Vital is actually a Sprint branded device known as the Sprint Vital. You don't see any ZTE or actually Sprint branding anywhere on it, which is a little bit of br a breath of fresh air here. Uh, as you can see, this is a rather large device. It is ZTE's flagship device on Sprint. It replaces the Sprint Flash, but it's really just a, a bit of an upgrade. The biggest thing is that we now sport a 5-inch display as opposed to the 4.5-inch seen on the Flash. However, the Vital sticks with the 720p HD display, so the pixels per inch actually decrease from um, mid-320s down to 294, so a little bit of a drop there. However, this is an IPS display. It is very vibrant. It is very bright. It's got great viewing angles, and even in direct light, you can read it no problem. So. It's not the greatest display out there, but it is very good, especially considering this is a budget high-end device, if you want to kind of classify it that way. The Vital is going to retail for $99 on contract, so it is definitely not in the league of something like the HTC One or the Galaxy S4, but as we'll talk about in a bit, it is going up with last year's high-end devices such as the HTC Evo 4G LTE and the LG Optimus G, so in terms of pricing, you got to kind of consider that. As you can see, the design is very nondescript here. All around the phone, you're going to find your ports. you got a power and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We've got volume rocker and micro USB port on the side here. And then we also have a physical sh camera shutter on the right, which is always nice to have. These keys um, are very pronounced. They have a lot of travel, a lot of play, so it's really easy to press and hold them. Um, we are very pleased. It's one of the better feeling button configurations we've seen out there. And while this is a personal preference, we really do like this top right power button placement. Um, it's very easy to reach with just a finger, um, although some people do prefer it on the side over here. One of the things that this has changed since the Flash is we now have capacitive keys down here. The Flash was a very stock Android device down to the point that they actually had the on-screen keys, but ZTE has gone back to these capacitive. And they also have replaced the app switcher key with a menu key, so a little bit different there for the purists. Under the hood, we have Android 4.2, excuse us, 4.1 here. So it is Jelly Bean, but it is not the latest version of Jelly Bean. Still, it is a relatively stock build. As we'll go into the app drawer here, you're going to see everything looks pretty much the same as you would imagine on a stock Android device such as the Nexus. That is not to say that this is a Nexus-like experience, however. There are still a number of ZTE apps on here. We'll see things like their sharing, their music. We've got a video player. Um, they've actually even replaced the browser. It is very similar to the stock Android browser, however, see the button layout down below, it's just a little bit different. That said, all of the standard Google apps are preloaded. We've got Chrome, which is our preferred browser there. Um, we also have the stock messaging app, we've got Play Music. So this is very much a Google experience. But one of the things you will also notice down here is the Sprint ID. So if you are so inclined, you're able to download all the different Sprint ID packs. If we take a look at the back here, we're going to find a nice blue finish. This gives the Vital a little bit of personality here. Um, it is a soft touch paint finish, which makes it easier to hold. Like we said, the device is rather large and it's a little bit thick at 10 millimeters, but it still fits surprisingly, we don't want to say comfortable into the hand, but it fits well into the hand. So it's not obtrusive like you might think. We do have a large camera back here, um, but a less obtrusive hump than we found on the flash. It is a bump up from a 12.6 megapixel camera to a 13 megapixel camera. So not much different. You see the HD video, it can record at full HD 1080p. Camera performance was pretty good for any type of sharing you're gonna do. Uh, colors were good. Details in general were good. Um, indoor pictures turned out a little bit grainy, especially as the light waned. Um, but it's not the greatest camera in the world. It's definitely not up there with the HTC One or the Galaxy S4 in terms of camera performance. You can see the camera app has been a little bit reworked over the stock Android. It does have the stock feel, but it's got some different features. You have your filters. 
um, and whatnot. So everything's a little bit different. As you can see, we're flipping it around here. So all in all, we are impressed with the Vital. However, it does, like we say, go up with last year's top end contenders. You can see a little bit of sensitivity issues there with the keyboard or with the capacitive keys. So like we said, it goes up against last year's contenders and quite honestly, it just doesn't really hold a flame to something like the Evo 4G LTE or the LG Optimus G, which are both the same price of this phone right now. Um, the Evo and this both sp support 1.5 gigahertz dual core S4 processors, whereas the Optimus has the S4 Pro quad core. Um, this and the Evo both have a gig of RAM, whereas the Optimus has two gigs of RAM. And we did notice some RAM issues once we were running some of our benchmarks. I think it was the OpenGL benchmark or what they now call GLX bench. Uh, we did notice or we did get a memory error saying that we might want to close some programs. And we didn't have too many apps open at that time, just some of our testing apps. So, like we said, this is a good device, but it's not really playing with the big boys just yet. If this were a $50 device, it would be a lot more compelling. But at the same time, it's very hard for ZTE to differentiate between something like this at $100 and the Force, which is their low-end offering. Even if you make that free, only a $50 price difference between the two makes the Force pretty much obsolete. Um, one of the other big issues we had on this was the call experience. Caller said we just sounded very bad on it. Unless the microphone was exactly in the sweet spot, we got a lot of complaints. They asked us to repeat ourselves very frequently. And overall, it just wasn't the greatest call experience in the world. They said even when it was in the sweet spot, it still was just a middle of the range at best. Uh, battery life, even though it's got a massive 25 milliamp battery in here, um, we do find that the battery drains a lot quicker than we would think it would drain. So large battery, as you can see, we also have the micro SD slot and the SIM card for the LTE connectivity. But there's some battery issues to be worked out on this device also. So in the end, it's not a bad device. If it's one of those free on contract kind of phones, um, it's not a bad pickup. However, at the current $100 price point, there are definitely better options out there.